work with Arcane K. So we're really thankful uh, for uh, those resources. Um, I also wanted to highlight our uh, DOT Deputy Director. He's not in tonight, uh, but Theo Ngongang, uh, he sends uh, you all his, his kindest regards and he wishes that he could uh, join us all today. Next slide. And uh, Patrick, before we move any further, I, I did want to also let ev everyone know that there is a public involvement survey that we ask uh, our Title VI public involvement survey that we ask all of the participants to fill out um, for us so we can keep a track of uh, who's in, in the meeting. And back to you, Patrick. I believe we stated that uh, you were going to take this slide, Melissa. I'll take it away. Yep. Good evening, everybody. Melissa Miklas here. Uh, noticed that I recognize some of your names, so looking forward to chatting with you all again when we get into breakout rooms later. So just a quick couple housekeeping things for tonight. So on our agenda is just getting uh, you guys acquainted with us and getting some contact information over to you in case you want to touch base with us later. We're going to go through a background um, on the project and even beyond the project and before that, that Patrick will walk you all through. We'll talk a little bit about what makes your street and your community special. We want to hear from you. So we have a couple of Slido surveys that will pop up. Um, and then we'll talk about what makes a great street. So we're here tonight to talk about the separated bike lane project, but that's just one component of a street. So let's talk about all those elements that make it a great place. For you all to travel and live on and commute around and recreate. So, then we want to talk a little bit about our Baltimore complete streets manual in case you all haven't seen that. We'll talk about things that are more of an exercise of fit. So we don't have a concept for you tonight, but we want to talk about what does fit on this street. So you all can help us move forward. Then we'll go into breakout rooms for about 25 minutes. Talk about the corridor what you think is special about it, some of the challenges you see, and then talk a little bit about those um, fit exercises that we're going to show you. And then we'll talk next steps and get you on, on to your evening, to dinner, to your families, whatever is your pleasure. So a little bit of housekeeping here and rules for tonight. If you guys have been to a public meeting with me, you've probably seen this slide a hundred times. I think we all have become acquainted with these virtual spaces, even though we probably prefer to be in person together. Um, but if you would please stay muted until we get into our breakout rooms or we're having some discussion. If you are on the phone with us tonight, star six to unmute and star three to raise your hand. Uh, when we get into those breakout rooms, we try to be certain that everyone gets an opportunity to speak. So we just ask you all to be kind to your neighbors, listen to them and make sure with us that everybody gets a moment to speak and share. Um, and this presentation will be ready uh, for you guys later, posted up to our project website. So let's get you guys a little bit acquainted with how you can touch base with us later. I do know that there's a couple people on the phone, so I am going to read this out character by character as well as saying it. So if you would like to touch base with Patrick, our project manager for this meeting, during this meeting, or let your neighbors know how to contact him, uh, the email address for that is going to be DOT dash community at baltimorecity.gov. So that is D-O-T dash C-O-M-M-U-N-I-T-Y at B-A-L-T-I-M-O-R-E-C-I-T-Y dot G-O-V. The website that you can access to gain more information and keep in touch with us and see how we're doing on the project is baltimorebikeways.com forward slash wabash dash avenue. It's a long one. I'm going to spell it for those of you on the phone in case you want to write it down. It's www.baltimorebikeways.com forward slash W A B A S H dash A V E N U E. 
And if you want to go to our um, input page from there, the link will be copy and pasted into the chat in just a moment. Um, I won't spell that one out. I will spare you from that, but it's baltimorebikeways.com forward slash Wabash Avenue forward slash contact. And then the last thing, if you guys prefer to leave us a voicemail, you can call 443-984-4022. So again, that should be copy and pasted into the chat for you guys so you have it, and we will also share that at the end of the presentation. So I'm going to hand this back to Patrick at this point and let him go through some background on the project in your area. Fantastic. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Melissa. So uh, before we get started here, um, I wanted to point out that this is a planning project. Um, it is a concept. Um, so it's very important that we do the research. Um, we have to recognize that there are existing plans and existing policies within your neighborhoods and within this corridor. And I want to let you know that from what I've seen, uh, we have the Greater Northwest Community Coalition Neighborhood Plan. And when I reviewed that document, I noticed that there's a strong emphasis on corridors and nodes. And the corridor that I want to highlight is the Wabash a Avenue uh, corridor. Um, Formally, it's not acknowledged within the plans, but I wanted to highlight it here because of the nodes that are important is the West Cold Spring Lane node. Um, it's important because um, that's where a lot of the activity uh, happens with the Metro stop. It's a lot, it, it's where a lot of people are walking. It's where the neighborhoods are connected. It's where people are um, just, doing a lot of mixing uh, to get to and from the neighborhood. However, it's kind of difficult to walk towards whether you're using your the crosswalk or trying to access it via bicycle. But one thing that the community plan did acknowledge was um, there wanted to be a improvement in the streetscape and design guidelines of how the corridor is ultimately uh, redeveloped and, and changed. And we're hoping that when we discuss this plan, that that falls in line with what the community is expecting. Another thing that the plan highlighted was the need for it to be pedestrian friendly. And it is really uh, encouraging to know that although this plan was written in 2005, it recognized very early on that the pedestrian, the person who's walking around um, the neighborhood is a, is a priority and it should be walkable and it should be safe for those people. And, it, and the plan actually set, states uh, creating a beautiful, safe path for pedestrian, pedestrians is as important as creating a beautiful, safe street for vehicles. And that's the type of things that we'd like to hear um, as we continue to implement or put into action our complete streets manual. Uh, next slide. And so focusing in on that node, so um, this is what walking around um, West Coast Spring uh, currently looks like. That red is the city's zoning code, and it essentially shows all the businesses um, that are around that area. Uh, the other uh, icons uh, with the little homes, those are actually um, where uh, public housing is located throughout the community. And the green uh, symbols are the schools uh, throughout the neighborhoods. And so um, we highlight this here because this also shows how everything is connected, uh, not only the street network, which obviously we can drive down, but also how do we walk from place to place? How do we bike from place to place? And so if we're biking from place to place, if you look at those purple lines, those purple lines are what currently exist as bike infrastructure within the community. Um, you may not notice them uh, per se because they're sharrows, they're pavement markings. Um, so uh, people can ride in the street, but not, they're not separated uh, facilities. Um, in contrast, uh, the Wabash uh, Avenue facility is proposed to be separated uh, to create a safer connection uh, between the West Coast Spring Metro and further uh, north west of the project area. I also wanted to highlight the, the pictures to the right, uh, just to give an idea of what is the environment that people are currently walking within 
and how are they interacting with the cars uh, within the corridor. Next slide. And so going back to protecting the most vulnerable users, um, in the Wabash Avenue corridor, that is going to be the people who are walking, the people who are biking. And in my assessment and research in preparing for this project, um, I went and used Google Street, Street View. Uh, it's very simple. Everyone has access to it. And I found that there are all these pictures of people walking across um, this, this busy road. And I say that, okay, this is uh, very real. Um, this project that we're proposing is needed. And so these are just some of the examples um, that I saw in the, in the time that I, that we took to prepare this. Uh, next slide. So going after that same image that we just saw, um, this schematic actually outlines uh, what that looks like um, from a bird's eye view. So the circles actually, the red circles show approximately where those two ladies were uh, walking on the side of the street. And the smaller circle shows where that person was walking across the street. And it's important that we understand the dimensions of this whole thing. I mean, the, the, the driving lanes are, are 12 feet, almost 12 feet wide. The walking, that person has to walk across a very uh, wide street before they can get across and safely. And so um, we have to consider how those people are feeling and how those people, how safe those people are as they try to get from one place to another. Uh, next slide. And so what does that look like? Uh, pushing further, we see that sometimes that looks like people on the side of the street selling clothes or um, uh, on street merchant, or sometimes it's somebody in the median that's asking you for money. <laughs> Or it could be somebody that's just walking around trying to get from place to place. Um, but the things that all of these people share is that they are people who are walking and existing outside of cars. And we have to make sure that when they're on the road, that we're also looking out for their safety in addition to those who are driving. Next slide. The other thing that I wanted to bring up is we actually have uh, this image of Wabash Avenue actually shows uh, these two kids walking along what most people would think is a safe place to walk, or maybe not even most, but it's their only option uh, to walk, I should say. Um, and that's in May of 2019. Those two young men were using that, uh, that section off to the side to get to wherever they're trying to walk. And then kind of eerily, if you look to the left and down of the July 2022, picture, you can actually see that there's a mural to a crash victim um, who was hit um, on this stretch of roadway. Um, so how we redevelop and change this roadway is going to matter for those who, ex who are currently using the facility and who, unfortunately, um, didn't have a safe facility from back in the day. So next slide. Uh, again, pushing forward with that safe uh, narrative. Um, it is important to note that there actually are people who ride their bikes down this road. Um, I know some people are like, oh, never ride a bike down this road. It's too fast, it's too crazy. Well, sometimes there are people who do not have a choice um, that must ride their bike to get to and from their job, to their house, to their friend's house, or who, who, who knows? Um, but riding a bike and walking is their only means of getting there. And so it was very important to me and the team that we highlight this need. Uh, next slide. And so uh, the other thing that I wanted to take uh, time out is time to recognize actually is all the people who um, are doing a great job of letting DOT know that, hey, um, we need you to, to uh, really pay attention to our community um, in the form of, hey, that traffic light is out or that's not working properly. And, uh, that sign is faded or we need some way to slow down traffic. And so what this chart shows is between 2019 and 2021, these are all the different 311 requests, which is, if most people don't know what a 311 request is, it's a handy system where people can identify a problem in their community and essentially uh, put together this, um, I don't know, this comment card, if you will, 
and then send it into DOT and say, hey, I need you to address this problem. This is a challenge. How can we deal with it? And what I thought was most interesting was all of these requests between 2019 and 2021 is that traffic signal repairs are actually the largest um, highlight that most, most people in the community bring up. And so we're, we definitely wanna make sure that when we do propose plans in the future and within this conversation, um, that we're highlighting and making sure that we incorporate um, these traffic uh, signal uh, challenges. Next slide. So uh, let's work together to take one step further or forward, excuse me. All right, next slide. Um, so in addition to uh, all of those images, we also have um, current projects and our current policy documents and that current policy document is the 2017 separated bike lane network plan. Uh, it's a continuation of the 2015 bike master plan. And what it does is it states what we all, I believe, can we can agree on is that Wabash Avenue is a very stressful, rot, stressful road to ride your bike on. Uh, whether you want to do it or not, um, people just don't feel safe. They don't feel um, okay uh, doing what they want to do or what they have to do. Therefore, um, we identified this corridor as a very strategic place to put a separated facility um, using all sorts of, of analytical tools and data sources uh, in addition to the feeling of it being uh, stressful. Um, additionally, uh, we again wanna provide uh, the acknowledgement that the Baltimore Metropolitan Council uh, has provided the resources and assistance uh, to advance projects like this uh, separated bike lane uh, for the goal of reducing traffic and to promote walking, biking, and transit use, uh, particularly uh, within this corridor, which is uh, using the Metro. Uh, so this is where we are now. Uh, we're engaging you, the community, uh, the electeds, and everyone in between. And uh, throughout this time, we're going to be developing a technical study of what's going on and a concept of what we hope to develop one day. And so uh, going forward, uh, this is uh, project scope and the overall schedule. Um, the, this project did kick off um, from a technical and a, um, I guess a study stamp standpoint last fall. Uh, but here we are in winter uh, developing that the, 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 um, the product uh, with you all, listening to you, what the priorities are, what the needs are, and um, by early spring, we're hoping to uh, refine what it is that we do discuss uh, so that in late spring, you can actually tell us if we did it right. So um, overall, uh, the goal at the end of this whole exercise, this whole discussion is to eventually get Preliminary plans are what in the engineering and architecture world are called 30% uh, complete plans, uh, which will then be taken to the next stage, what will be final design of a 30 to 100% design. And that would mean additional conversation as we go to the next stage. So uh, really, you know, put your thinking hat on, uh, open your heart, open your mind, and let us know what it is you want to see in the Wild Watch Dive in the uh, corridor. Okay, thank you. Um, and going back to the study area, uh, we have the, well, the corridor again. All right, I, I forgot this slide was here, I won't, I won't lie. <laughs> so um, anyway, um, yes, this is probably better. Uh, so uh, the overall corridor um, in the context of the bike network. So um, as stated, we have uh, existing separated facilities, existing shared lanes and planned shared lanes. And so it's important that we see this facility or this corridor within the context of what is the current bike network and where are we trying to go uh, with the overall bike master plan. And so however we end up designing the facility, it will be a connector, a, a, a active transportation, biking, walking, uh, highway, if you will, uh, within this corridor that will ultimately connect it to different parts of the neighborhoods throughout this area. Next slide. And so, um, Melissa, are you doing this slide? 
I'm going to take it. Okay. okay, there we go. Thanks, Patrick. So I think Patrick did an awesome job of just summarizing what has happened in the past. Uh, some of the issues that you can see if you're just out there observing what's going on. And while I live in the city and I've been reading documents and studying this and, um, you know, I've driven here on my in a car and I now have walked down this corridor. Um, to try to study it more. Now I know what it feels like to be a pedestrian on this corridor. But you guys know it better than I do. You guys probably live much closer to this than I do. Um, and so that's why you all are here tonight to help us figure out what we can do with this project. So things that we know is that, you know, this is a, a vibrant community. You all do care about this corridor. That's why you're here tonight. You have friends and family here. Um, you know, there are some industrial uses, so we've got some big trucks kind of when you're walking down the street, they're, they're blowing by you. So, you know, sometimes that's a little bit intimidating and it would be nice if perhaps they were driving a little slower. We know that we've got, you know, some transit along this corridor. Um, there's some schools that are nearby, some places of worship, some small businesses. Um, but most importantly, there's a lot of houses here and houses mean people and kids and you all who are here tonight. So we thought we would just take a step back for a moment and try to understand what connects you to this corridor and what makes you believe that this is a special place so that we can understand that and preserve that as we move forward into the design process. So keeping you all in mind, and, and this is your first moment to participate here with us tonight, we thought we would ask you a question. So to answer this question, if you've got a smartphone and maybe you've seen this before, you can open up your camera on it and you can take a picture of that QR code or you can go on your computer, your smartphone or your tablet to slido.com, S-L-I-D-O.com and you can put in the number 1408006. And if somebody could copy and paste that in the chat for me, Mark, that would be super amazing. So I'm going to bring up this first question. This is kind of our warm up question. We're going to do a couple slides tonight, but this first question is really about you all. So what, what do you love about this roadway? What makes it special or what do we need to celebrate or, or make feel more special about this place as we get into this design concept and record all of your thoughts and ideas? So if you're there with me, you can, okay, transit. That's great. You can type those in and hit submit. They should come over live. Everybody will see them getting to Home Depot. That's what I do too. Um, those folks are so helpful over there. They're some of my favorite people. Serve as a good connection. That's a good one too. A couple more people. Nothing really now. It's just a scary, necessary route. That's that's probably not untrue. So hopefully we can help make that better. Subway stations for sure. Um, is opportunity to expand bike infrastructure. It's showing up on that separated bike plan network. So um, that's definitely a good place to start. Any design project, is it showing up in a planning document? All right, so we'll just give this one more second here to let the last participant cutting back on traffic from Reisterstown Road. Okay. All right. So I'll give this just a couple more seconds. Looks like we have one more participant and then we will keep on cruising, but it's important for us to know how you feel about this place and how you want to feel about this place, how you want to use this place, maybe the challenges that you're experiencing now. And we're going to talk about that in those breakout rooms. So I'm going to keep cruising here through our presentation so we can get you all off to dinner and to your families. There we go. Purpose, major, stay true to the road. Got it. Approach way. Okay. All right. So we're going to save all these great ideas. And let's talk a little bit about what makes a great street, because I think a lot of people just get caught up in the fact that we're putting cars in this place and we're moving, but streets are really the places that are our homes and our communities. So when we think about designing a street, there's a few elements that we kind of like peel back the layers and try to figure out how to design this based on the context. And so one of those things is transit accessibility. And that's how do I get there in my car? How do I get there on my bike? How do I get there by walking? How do I get there by scooter? You know, it's my responsibility to help make that safe for you all. The bicycle network, of course, does this corridor show up in a plan? Has that been supported before? Do we have people biking on this street? And Patrick showed us that we do. 
uh, pedestrian safety, you know, our most vulnerable road users. We need to make sure that we carve out space for people, that it's safe to cross, that people have that sense of comfort. Traffic calming is pretty key. We've got a big roadway out there. We've got big vehicles on it, and it's quite easy to go fast on this roadway in a lot of places. So how do we calm that? How do we slow that down? How do we make people and cars aware that there are folks walking and biking in this area? And then there's a streetscape and streetscape and placemaking component, which is uh, wayfinding signs and benches and maybe murals and art and all of those things that we can use to celebrate your community. So, so right now with this project, we have this little pot of money to help make that first step, that first small step. So the, the little pot of money we have um, is really used to do all of the things that kind of fit within the curb to curb. And we sometimes call these like signing and striping plans. So we can do all of these good little moves where we don't have to move curbs and, and we don't have to wait for the money to build sidewalks. But we wanna make sure that we talk to you all about that now so you can build a vision for the future. But we wanna focus on the things that we can do now to help create a safer space for all of our modes of travel, how we calm that traffic, how we protect some of our pedestrians, how we get those bikes on this roadway without feeling like they're super vulnerable. So that's what we're gonna talk about tonight. We're gonna to talk about now and this project, and then we're gonna talk about a little bit about the future. So when we think about bicycle improvements, since this is a, a separated bike lane project that we're working on here, when we think bikes, there's a lot of different tools that we have. But we need to pick the appropriate tools for this corridor and the appropriate tools for the people who are going to be using it. And so we have three lanes of traffic on either side of a median. Shared lane markings, that's probably not the greatest idea. It's too, it's too fast for that. We've got space. We could, we could do something that's more separated, more organized. So then we have our bike lanes and our buffered bike lanes. Um, we have protected bike lanes, which has a buffer. Sometimes it's a, a vertical component. Sometimes it's a car. Um, and then we have those bike lanes that are two-way on one side of the roadway. And then sometimes they're um, bi or multi-directional. One's going one way with traffic. The other's coming the other way with traffic. So these are all the tools that we have that we can use to improve bicycle safety. And then we have some tools that we can use to calm traffic. So some of those things in our toolbox are um, hardening a turn. So instead of people being able to go really fast on an arc, you know, we kind of tighten that up and make it a little bit more of a 90 degrees, slows everybody down. You've probably seen these murals and these protected intersections across the city now. So sometimes we use paint and sometimes we use paint and photos. And then eventually in the future, when we have the funds for it, we can actually build the sidewalk out to those spaces. We also have some traffic signal timing things that we can do. Make sure that we have push buttons for pedestrians. Narrowing our roadway lanes. Maybe they're too big. Maybe when we squeeze them, everyone kind of slows down a little bit. So that's a tactic we can use. And then I always feel like when we organize all of our modes of transportation, it really helps with safety. It really helps with predictability of movements. If I have someone in a bike lane, I know where they're supposed to go instead of them being in the lane with me in my car. So that's really helpful. I think organizing and using striping to do that. And then we have those things in our environment, those flexible delineators that help provide that vertical separation. So those are some of the tools in the toolkit we have. For our pedestrian improvements, um, you know, things when we get into bigger projects, we love to do shared use paths. You know, that gets uh, bicyclists and pedestrians out of our street gives them a great space for themselves, helps improve that character and placemaking component. Um, we definitely wanna note for improving our ADA ramps along this corridor, providing crosswalks, um, and then allowing those pedestrian signals so people can push a button and understand how much time they have to cross the street and make sure that timing is appropriate for all users. And then there's other tools that we can use like expanding our sidewalks, improving what they look like, making sure that there's not a, a ton of bumps um, in our sidewalk, and then pavement markings too. Again, organizing users, making sure that the environment is legible for everyone to use it. So I'm gonna take a moment here before Patrick jumps back in to talk more about the Complete Streets Manual to show this video to you, and then I'll let Patrick take it away. So somebody start waving their hands if you all don't hear the audio, but I'm gonna trust that this is gonna work. 
Baltimore's new Complete Streets Manual is a resource to help make better decisions about how changes to our streets happen. It promotes safety and equity by giving highest priority to the most vulnerable street users amongst us. It does this by considering all the ways people get around our city and prioritizes making it safer, easier, and more enjoyable to walk, take the bus, or ride a scooter. So what does this mean for you? It means the new design features that make it easier and safe for you to cross the street, letting you better connect with your neighborhood or with your destination. It means curb space can be better managed to make it easier to drop off or pick people up, create space for deliveries, and provide room for a nicer sidewalk experience, which benefits businesses around the community. And it means that most of the car-oriented streets can be made safer and more welcoming to you, however you choose to get around. Check out the Baltimore Complete Streets Manual online at this address. All right, and I will hand it back to you, Patrick, to go through a couple more details on the Complete Streets Manual. And if you did it. Yeah, there we go. Just give me a second. I said, I like to see people when I'm talking and I couldn't see people while I was talking. That was holding it back. Anyway, so, um, everyone, thank you for, um, listening so far. So, um, the thing that I want all of us to understand, um, before we roll forward is the complete streets manual is not, um, the design team's manual. It is the city's manual. It is your manual, um, to show us how to redesign this roadway. Um, because the statistics show that. Baltimore uh, households actually have 29% uh, of people. I'm sorry, I'm reading that incorrectly. Uh, Baltimore households without access to a personal vehicle, it's 29% and as high as 66% in historically disadvantaged and under, uh, underserved, na underserved neighborhoods. And so that's why um, the Complete Streets Manual takes this approach where we highlight and elevate the people who are walking uh, at the top of that hierarchy. Uh, then the people who are cycling, riding their bike, or using scooters and other uh, small mobility devices like uh, motorized wheelchairs and things of that nature uh, up at the top of, of other modes of travel. And so that's what the Complete Streets Manual is trying to get, get at. That's the heart and soul of it. And um, we're just trying to save lives um, on the roadway. So uh, next slide, please. All right, so this slide right here was taken directly out of our manual, everyone's manual, right? So uh, to help us understand here, let's start from the top. This table shows you the context of the roadway that we are all looking at here. And that roadway is, if you go all the way down to the bottom where that dark blue uh, rectangle is, is Wabash Avenue is a high speed limited access roadway, uh, meaning that it's very fast, um, there aren't a whole lot of uh, ways for people to cross the street safely. Uh, that's that limited access point. Um, however, um, the key operation is people, there's a lot of people who use it. There's a lot of people who walk. It has a high pedestrian volume. Uh, therefore, uh, in that blue column, the very last column, the Complete Streets Manual's goal is to create an all ages and abilities bicycle facility for this high speed limited access roadway. And as Melissa uh, demonstrated or explained is this project is the first small step in doing that. Um, this project doesn't have the resources to create a shared use path, but we do have the resources to do a separate bike lane. And that's what we're here to discuss. And so when you go over to the next table, it then goes over and explains what are the criteria criteria and dimensions of how we plan to, or how we can uh, redesign the roadway to accommodate that bike facility. If you look at the first column, it says street type, and then further down, it has these different type of road types or street types, um, urban street connector, neighborhood connector, industrial access, parkland boulevard. Within the Wabash Avenue, there are numerous different street types that we have to keep in mind uh, so that when we put in a separate facility that we are being very sensitive uh, to the people who live in the area 
while also ensuring that the people who are using the separated bike lane are safe. So um, these documents are publicly accessible. Uh, we will be using them to design the facility and they are completely available for everyone to see them and help us do a, a great job at redesigning the road. Next slide. Right. So, uh, before we get into talking about what this roadway might look like, uh, we'd like to just kind of take your temperature on, um, you know, who everyone is when it comes to bicycling. So, it's great to know who we're talking with because not everyone rides a bike, right? Um, but everyone needs to be safe around bicycles. Um, and so, having that organized space makes that behavior a little bit more predictable. That makes some people feel comfortable. That still makes some people not feel comfortable. So it's helpful to know as we're chatting with you all tonight, um, where you guys come from. Not everybody rides a bike. Like I said, not everybody wants to. Some people ride a bike and they feel comfortable. Some people ride it because it's their only choice and they don't feel comfortable. And then some people would like to, but they're just really intimidated. And so they don't. Um, so it looks like 44% of our 45% of our people here are in the no category. We have a few people who are riding for transportation, 29%. Uh, we have some folks who are saying no, but they would like to. So it will be interesting to hear from you all when we're in our breakout rooms, why that may be. And then some of you who ride for recreation. Okay, so that helps us. So the majority of folks in here um, maybe don't ride a bike. So we'll be interested to know if you don't ride, you know, um, when we're designing these separated bike lanes, how you feel um, most safe in these environments. So, thank you all for participating. All right, I'm just going to give that 1 more second, just in case someone is putting in their last poll and. We'll keep cruising. All right, so 31% do not 25% do not, but they would like to 19% uh, do for transportation. Oh, now that's 18 um, and 18 for recreation. And so we're at um, no at 29% and no, but I would like to at 29%. Okay. Thank you all for sharing. All right. I don't want to cut anybody off, but I do want to keep cruising. All right, here we go. Okay, so when we start thinking about how we will design a roadway with a separated bike lane facility, really for us, it's like, what can I fit in the space that we have? And how can we make sure that we're preserving the vehicular movement that we, you know, for the volumes that we have, how do we make sure we're organizing movements and keeping everybody safe? So we like to call it an exercise of fit, and we're going to show that to you. But what we're considering when we're doing this is making sure we're thinking about traffic calming, like we've talked about. We want to make pedestrian crossings shorter so that they feel safer and so that they have more. Uh, we we are keeping in mind the safety of all users, so that's people in their cars, people biking, people walking, people who are going to. And then we want to make sure that we're creating connectivity. So are we putting our bike lanes on the appropriate side of the street for where they need to connect to? Are we keeping people safe by not crossing a lot of driveways or street entrances? So all of these things are milling about in our heads while we're trying to figure out what to do. And then, like we said, with this project, this pot of money is for something that is more along the lines of the signage, pavement markings, um, marking in crosswalks. And so we're keeping our tools in mind that we can afford. And then we want to make sure, and you guys can share with us in a few moments, uh, what we need to be concerned about, what we need to monitor and watch. So um, do we need to preserve parking? Do we need to allow access to driveways, make sure people can see and get in and out? Um, there's some utilities that might be in our way. How do we work with those? We have our traffic signals that we want to make sure that we're addressing that and understanding how that's working for our flow of vehicles and our movement of pedestrians. So these are some of the things we consider and you guys can share some more. So now I'm going to show you guys what might fit in the space that we have here. So we've gone out and kind of done a couple measurements to see how much pavement we have to work with. And so right now we have three lanes on either side of a median, which is typical. It's not the same everywhere. And in some cases, we have sidewalk on both sides, in some cases, one. And as you saw um, in the pictures, and you live there, you know where the sidewalk is not present. Um, so this is like sometimes there's sidewalk, sometimes there isn't, but this is a So 
if we start to think about separated bike lane facilities, there's a couple options here. So you saw um, when I shared some of those pictures that there are some of these two-way bike lanes, and you've seen these across the city probably. So you've got bicycle traffic going um, you know, north and southbound on the same side of the street, and they're protected by striping and perhaps a vertical, something like a curb stop. Sometimes it's with parking. Um, but in this scenario, what we're showing is it being on the west side of the roadway, kind of where um, some more of the residential areas are. And so it will be that two-way cycle track on that side. We're preserving two lanes in that southbound direction. And then the other side of the median remains the same. So we still have three lanes of travel. Um, and this is what we're doing in our signing and striping. Another option of fit is to do the same thing, on, but on the other side. So in the northbound direction, that would go down to two lanes, and then we would have our buffer for our cycle track and two um, directions of bike track. So it's just a flip of what the other one is. So again, preserving three lanes of traffic on one side, two in the other. Um, the differences here are kind of like where the roadways come in and intersect with the cycle track, where there might be driveways, access to transit, et cetera. So those are some of the things that we consider when we're looking at one side or the other for a facility like this. The other option would be to split the bikes and put them in the same direction of travel with the vehicles. So we would perhaps go down to two lanes on either side of that median, and then we would have our bikes on the outer edges of the roadway. So. You'll see some dimensions here, and these will probably vary because the corridor is not the same all the way along. Our intersections, we would have to make sure that we have appropriate connectivity and clarity. Um, and those lane widths, if we want to calm traffic, may go ahead and narrow down. So this is some of the things that we can fit. Maybe you guys will have some additional ideas when we go into our breakout rooms, but we know that you guys may have an ultimate vision. So we, will, we want to just give you an opportunity to say, you know what, I'd, I'd like to take it further. I know you can't do it in this small step, but for the future, I want you to record my ideas. So we know that you may want things like larger sidewalks, right? You may want things like trees buffering you um, between your pedestrian space and sidewalk and your vehicular movement. So it's possible to do that by expanding the sidewalk on one side, with our two lanes of traffic, and then within those three lanes of traffic, again, putting that two-way cycle track within the space. So a lot like the concepts that I showed you, a bigger investment, expanding the sidewalk, and taking it down to two lanes of traffic on both sides, two lanes of vehicles. So the flip of that, um, or excuse me, another way to do that, still keeping that those two, two lanes of vehicular travel, would be to take that cycle track out of the roadway, pop it up on the sidewalk with peds, and then have space for the bikes and the peds. So this is big grand vision stuff, um, more trees, more green space, kind of using one of those lanes to fulfill that purpose. And, and we may not be there yet, um, but we want you to help us understand if that is something you want in the future. So we're gonna jump into breakout rooms now. Um, I showed a lot of things, and you guys can take a look at these things in your breakout rooms with your people. Um, but what we're going to do is just assign everyone to two groups, and we are going to show you a tool where we can comment along the corridor, and you can help us understand some of your concerns. You can do that on your own, or you can do that with your folks who will be sharing their screen. And then we'll talk about um, those, those concepts, those fit exercises that we just did and what your ultimate vision might be. At the end, what we're going to do is I'll share another survey with you guys so you can help me understand which of those exercises a fit that you might like or if there's something else that you would prefer. So rather quickly, just for the sake of the group, I'll let you know that this QR code right here will take you to a tool that is called Remix, which is a comment map. So we will also copy and paste the link to that remix in the chat. We can do that now while I'm talking about it, and then we'll do it when we pop into the rooms. So that remix tool is going to look something like this, a little bit like Google Earth. And you can zoom around on this guy, and there's a button up here that says post comment. By clicking on this button, it gives me a little purple dot here where I can click on the 
and then I can type a comment in here. So I can type it, I can put my name if I want to, I can put my email address if I want to, and then hit post and my comment will be recorded. So um, I will go ahead and ask Patrick if he has anything he wants to share before we pop into breakout rooms, and then we will do that. We will share this tool and then talk about those exercises a bit. So about 25 minutes in a breakout room, uh, maybe 10 minutes on this tool, and then the rest of our time talking about those exercises. Patrick? Sure. Um, so I'm looking forward to really getting into the conversations here. Um, I have been monitoring the chat. Um, it's been very lively. I look forward to really getting down to the nitty gritty of uh, really talking about the racial disparities of traffic collisions and deaths throughout the community and really around the country. Um, so um, I am listening to that. I am a black person, by the way. Um, I, I do want to highlight that and um, I'm looking forward to talking about that. So um, when we do break into the rooms, one thing that I will highlight um, in the in these in, in this uh, comment layer here is uh, there will be layers that will actually show you different uh, data points of uh, traffic collisions along this along this roadway. Um, if you could go down and show the uh, collision data, please. Um, further up, further up, further up. Uh, collisions. So if you turn that on, that actually shows all the people that have been hit by cars uh, throughout the uh, roadway there. So we are um, basing our, wor our work on a scientific process and also on actual data of people who need the facility. So um, we hear you, we're listening. Oh, and that red dot actually unfortunately means that someone was killed. So um, we hear you, we understand that there are opinions and opinions can run hot, uh, but there is a, there was a scientific process that was taken into account for um, creating the foundation and the reasoning behind the technical studies that make this sort of facility real and, and needed within the community. Um, so that stated, um, I know that didn't answer everyone's questions. I know I didn't persuade and convince everyone, um, but I do wanna let you know that I am listen, listening and reading in the chat and I am um, open, keeping myself open to have these conversations and to receive as much feedback as possible. So, are uh, we ready to break out? Let's do it. All right, Eric. I don't see my accept button. Maybe I have to stop presenting. I can't hear you. That might be the case. It won't let me, it won't let me go. Hold on, let me see if I can push you. Uh, doesn't let me edit the breakout assignment, so it won't let me put myself. You stop presenting, right? I stop presenting. Yeah. Hold on. Let me uh, let me change you. No, because you're a co-host. Huh? Let's see. Hold on. Let's see. If I say move two, I want to put you in breakout room one. I'm gonna remove the co-host room. Okay. Now see what happens. Okay. I'll send a text if I can't share or something. Okay. Once you get if if you get in there, I can change it back. Okay. Well, let me do this. Uh, if that's not working, let me remove you from the breakout room. And then if you, you might be able to click breakout rooms 
and just move to session two on your own. Okay. All right, one second. Your name just disappeared. Let me hold up. There you go.
All right, folks, welcome back to the main room. Thank you all for your for your thoughts and your sharing. Um, I know in my room, you know, there's a, a couple key themes that we heard and I, I don't want to um, keep us all so much longer. Um, but I think the key themes that we've heard, um, and, th and this goes without saying that you're all here tonight because you want to be heard and there's something going on in your neighborhood and you want to have a voice and that's important. I think we've also heard that for those of you who do not want a bike facility on this roadway, you feel like you've been asking DOT for other things and those haven't happened yet. So you're curious as to you know, how DOT prioritizes projects. Um, and you also said that intersections and ADA accessibility are quite important um, to you all. For the people who were in support, it seemed like um, the, the common theme there, and I think we only had one person in my group, but there was some chat um, going is that, you know, one, one death is too many for a bicyclist. So if we have the space, you know, why aren't we providing equity and transportation for all modes? Um, and people who bike along this, um, this avenue, not everyone lives there. Um, people are kind of biking through it and connecting to other uses there that they enjoy going to. So I, I hear you all. I hear that there are some concerns with this. I hear that you want to be heard. We even heard that um, you all thought we should do an in-person meeting and we're about to talk about that in just a second. Um, so I think that, that sums up the comments that we heard in our room um, from the other room. Do you just wanna take a moment to, to see if um, I missed elaborating on anything? I can I can jump in. It was uh, largely you know a lot of the same. Um, we heard you know specific comments on the three concepts. Uh, we've we've been asked to look at a multi-use facility, a mixed-use facility. Um, we've we've heard that um, two truths can can be true, right? That bike lanes may lead to gentrification, but at the same time. Uh, African American uh, residents use bike lanes and need bike lanes. So, um, how do we solve that problem? Um, at the same time, as we've we've been asked, um, you know, to solve a couple problems here, right, with the the conditions of the existing sidewalks, um, and basically, it sounds like really just to use a strategy. Um, one commenter asked us to use, you know, to tackle the light loads. Where we can and save the bigger the, the bigger loads for 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 more conversations and more strategies. So, um, yeah, a lot of a lot of the same. And I wanted to add, add Mark, um, is that I really appreciate the discourse on on both sides. Um, dichotom dichotomous uh, discussion is needed for things like this. Um, and I do understand that this is a virtual environment, and that's that's challenging for some people. Um, maybe even a lot of people, sometimes I forget to take myself off mute. <laughs> so, um, that stated, um, I'm really looking forward to, um, individual or, uh, community meetings in the future that are in person, um, where we can really talk uh, through some of these concerns. Um, we can bring out some maps. We can bring out some notebooks. We can take some pictures. We can actually go out there and, and feel how the street feels, um, for the sake of our plan. Um, and really, really um, get that time to weigh in and discuss things. Um, that stated, um, does anyone else have any time or any any feedback that they want to uh, provide? Well, Patrick, let's maybe get through just the rest of the presentation oh. so we can take the temperature on the of the future meeting. Um, just I don't want to respect everybody's time. Oh yeah, you're right. I'm sorry. You're right. Thank you. Thank you. Um, okay. So but the next from, thing from the point that we just listed, I just wanted to add one point to that list. Um, in that for, for for this general area, we haven't heard overall planning, and I understand the scope of this particular project, and that that's what puts residents in a um, do you want this or not uh, when so many other things need to be there. So how do we broach at some point in this the conversation? Um, not so much. 
just bike lanes, and I understand it's DOT and, and what have you, but how, wh when do we have a comprehensive discussion about the development of an area? So to include DOT, to include streetscaping um, and, and other things, if we wanna have bike lanes, we're gonna need street lighting. Uh, we're gonna need certain traffic enhancements. Um, so, so to many of the points that have been made, bike lanes um, get, get put against other projects that are also necessary and in a from a from a community development or city planning standpoint we should be able to talk about more than one thing at a time as we do in other parts of the city yes sir and, and i love that you brought that up um because our partner the department of planning is actually going through their comprehensive plan right now um and i believe that um the greater northwest is uh next up on their list of forums that they're gonna go and have meetings and uh, discussions. And what I actually put in the chat is the planourbaltimore.com website, uh, where we are, uh, where they, uh, Department of Planning, um, is taking that live feedback that is trying to collect that information uh, so that you can tell us, okay, bike lanes are cool, but what about our sidewalks? What about our lights? Um, what about our property uh, values? You know, those sorts of things. And DOT does work with the Department of Planning um, so that those comments aren't being missed and we are going and we will incorporate them into our own uh, plans and policies. Okay. All right. So I'm going to keep cruising just in case some people want to go and then we can make a few more points before we, um, before everyone drops off. So, I realize that there's a, a lot of differing opinions here, and I'm about to ask you a question that you might not want to answer. Um, this is not statistically significant. I understand this only represents the folks who are in the room here and the people who are using the Slido. If you want to participate, you may. If you don't want to, that's fine too. Um, this is just us taking the temperature of the room for the folks who want to participate in the Slido about what your thoughts are night right now and you and you might just not know um so we did share a two-way separated bike lane on the southbound side as well as a two-way separated bike lane on the northbound side which is the metro stop side um and then we shared the one-way separated bike lanes on both sides and then we understand that you all may have another idea um, so we're just doing this to take temperature. It's not an official vote. It doesn't mean that this is what we're carrying through. This is just one component of hopefully doing a better job of listening to you all and reaching out and understanding what your concerns are, um, be them global or be them about this project. So I'll just um, leave this for just a couple seconds here. Um, half and half here, let's see. Okay, I have another idea, 75%, so concept three, 25%. Melissa, can you share your screen? Oh, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. Okay, okay, I thought, I thought it was just me. <laughs> Thanks, Mark. Have, sorry, could you, Eric, uh, remake me a co-presenter or presenter? Do you see it now? Okay. Sorry guys, we had to change it so I could get into a breakout room. All right, so here we go. Um, looks like about 50-50 to concept three and I have another idea. Okay. All right, 57-43. And like I said, this is, um, you know, this is not statistically significant. We're just asking the folks on the phone call, so. Um, it's good to kind of understand what you guys are thinking after the presentation we gave and the chats that you all had. Um, but this is I just the first, one second. We're um, and I will let you comment. Um, this is just quick taking the temperature of what your thoughts are for tonight, and I'm going to go through because I have another mm -hmm. very important question to ask you, and then I'll, I'll let you speak. I'm sorry. Um, so I'm going to keep going. So it looks like about 58% concept three. 33%, I have another idea, 8% concept two. So thank you for sharing. I'm gonna keep cruising because this is very important. Um, I think I know the answer to this question, but we do wanna ask you just 
on been, this survey real quick. If you do think that we should, hold on one second, let me just get through this. If you do think we should have a follow up in person, um, so I am going to leave this up for a minute. I know Patrick, you have already been thinking about this and I'll let you share what those thoughts are in just a moment. Um, but there's just two more questions that I want to ask you about in person before um, Patrick shares with you what that might be and what his thoughts have been so far. And then uh, we'll close out. And then I know a couple of you are itching to, um, to say something again. So it looks like for sure 78% of you, yes, we should have an in-person, 22, not sure. Um, but we'll talk about that in just a second. So if we are going to do an in-person, uh, please help us understand which day of the week would be best for you. This question, I believe you can check multiple days of the week. This is going to help us with planning and make sure that we can reach you all, your friends, your neighbors. Um, if you all want to be contacted about the next meeting, if you would take this time now to drop your email address in the chat, that would be great. If you don't want that to go to everyone, I'm going to share contact information for Patrick and the phone number one more time, and you can call us or email Patrick and let him know that you want to be involved. Um, okay, so it looks like Monday, Tuesdays, pretty popular, um, less so Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. I'm going to leave this. This is quite important, so I'm just going to leave this up for a moment. Uh, the next question that we're going to ask you is if afternoon or morning or evening works best for you. So if you just give me one second, we'll go to that one. Ms. You have people on the phone who are not able to respond to your query, and I'm wondering how we can participate as well. Understood. So you are welcome to go to the Slido, or I'm going to give you a phone number and an email address, and you can call us and leave a message for Patrick or send an send an email. So if you give me just one second, I'm going to read that phone number for you. Um, and Thank just because we, we want to make sure you're welcome. You're welcome. All right. So it looks like the majority of folks are Monday, Tuesday, 63% and 63%. Wednesday is 38. Thursday is 38 and Friday is 13. Okay. All right. So just one quick question here, which time of day would work best? Your options are morning, afternoon, or evening. Evening. evening sounds best. Thank you for saying. Yeah, people working. So just a couple oh, of people say that. morning and afternoon. I know some folks are on shift work, so we like to ask just to make sure that we're trying to acknowledge everyone. Um, but it looks like 90% of people say evening. So I'm going to keep cruising um, just because I know it's 743 folks. So it looks like evening's best. Um, our last question here about engagement is, is there a festival or is there something happening in your community where we could come out and chat with you? So I, I'm sure Patrick's going to share a couple ideas, um, but it would be really great to know while we're just sitting here and Patrick's kind of sharing what we what we've been thinking about and making sure we reach out to you. If there's anything going on in the neighborhood soon so that there's an opportunity for us to go where the people are. So that might be. Um, going to a metro stop one evening and chatting with you as you come out, or you guys mm -hmm. might have a, a community meeting or something going on at a, a local church that's happening that we can come to. So if there's anything um, that you guys can think about right now, and of course you can send that to us later via the email address and the phone number I'll share with you or the contact form on our website, that would be great. So I see one person is typing. I'm going to let that person go ahead and submit their entry. And then what I'd like to do is I'll bring up the screen with the contact information in it so that I can share the email address and the phone number. For those of you on the phone, I'll read those out to you. And then Patrick, I'll let you kind of share thoughts on reaching out to the community one more time um, in person at this stage of the game so that we can collect some, um, some more information and how that might happen, when that might happen, the frequency, um, and then we can close out for the evening. All right. So um, on my screen here, I see having regular presence and feedback at the Metro bus stations is huge. The Ashburton Area Association is willing to host a special meeting and all can be invited to attend. Thank you very much. Um, PTO organizations, that's a great idea too. Okay, so if you have any more ideas, um, I'm just going to 
um, jump here to our contact information so that I can read that out for those of you on the phone. So if you would like to call and leave a message for Patrick about anything that we've chatted about tonight, that number is 443-984-4095. So that's 443-984-4095. And the email address, if you'd like to email Patrick, is dot dash community at baltimore city dot gov so again it's dot dash the dash mark community at baltimore city dot gov and so um, mark if you don't mind uh, maybe putting that information in the chat one more time before we close out and then patrick i am going to hand it back to you just for some uh, closing thoughts and comments, thoughts about public engagement, um, and then we'll wrap up for the evening. Yeah, certainly. Um, uh, so, first off, I do want to acknowledge Rhonda. Uh, she's been, been very active in the chat. Um, you asked the question, how will DOT get in touch with people without internet access about the person in the meeting? Uh, the Ashburton community does not connect with people without internet access. Yes, uh, we discussed that with our office of um, diversity and inclusion, and we're, just, we're we're actually going to rely on you all, um, important stakeholders uh, who have already attended this meeting. In addition to reaching out to uh, those on our stakeholders list to let them know that this meeting is going on, has gone on, and that there will be follow up meetings uh, to discuss it. Um, in regards to um, future meetings, what I ended up doing was dropping in a link um, that shows one of the roads uh, on Google um, where we currently have uh, an on-street shared um, shared facility. And perhaps that could be an opportunity, opportunity to go out there, walk the sidewalk and say, hey, um, if I'm riding my bike from here uh, to the separated facility or separated bike lane that we're talking about, um, is this, you know, how does this connect? Um, you know, that could be fun, um, or it could be interesting, could be insightful. Uh, just overall, I'm open to learning and hearing more feedback. Um, that's the whole point of this 30% this concept study. Um, as Melissa stated, um, I'm available. Um, my email is on the board. And if you have feedback, uh, please, please, please um, provide it. Thank you. Uh, Patrick, if I may, uh, the Ashburton Area Association is also creating a quarterly newsletter. Uh, our first issue is going to go out in a few days uh, to all residents in our community. So as we move forward, if you all decide to schedule a meeting or if you would like us to host a meeting, uh, please contact me. I sent my information to Eric uh, and to Melissa, and we can actually include that information. Uh, I guess it will be in our spring issue of the newsletter. So let me know. Yeah, that'll be awesome. Thank you, AJ. Sure. I'm looking more at the chat here. Very good point about Cold Spring and Wabash Avenue, um, children crossing the street. Um, taking that down. And um, is this is our last slide, right, Melissa? It is, yes. Okay. So I think uh, just the talking next steps, really, and I think the biggest next step is doing that in-person meeting. Mm -hmm. And so yeah. I think while we were saying this next meeting is in the spring, I think uh, we'll. Uh, I think I think the way that um, the 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 informal or formal next steps is, are going to be is that a lot of the neighborhood associations are going to invite us <laughs> out to talk, um, whether that be on their virtual meetings or whatever have you. And um, I'm actually going to have to spend time with our community engagement team uh, to identify uh, locations uh, that we can meet in person that has um, ADA uh, accessibility and all of the uh, requirements to make sure that we're meeting those. Uh, so um, I believe we have all the contact information, everyone's contact information here on the call. Um, and so, actually, as I kind of talk through that, 
Um, I'm actually looking for people who can help me stay in contact with the community. Um, it's quite obvious I do not live in the Ashburton area, um, but I am looking for people who can help me um, stay informed. So if there's anyone uh, that could help me um, get in contact with people to collect this feedback, I would be really, uh, really help, um, really grateful, especially to reach out to the seniors and other people who can't uh, log on and, and log in. So, all right. well, I think that's it for this evening and we appreciate you all hanging in there with us. We know this was a long one. I know it's important for you all to be heard. So we want to continue to give you the opportunity to do that. Action. Um, it's, it's been a long one, so I know you guys are probably ready to get on to your evening. So, unless there's anything else, Patrick, we'll all say good night. And if you guys have any more comments, please use the contact information you see on the screen here. And we will be in touch soon with uh, details on the in person meeting. Awesome and and I will say, I love all this feedback at the end. This, this is awesome. This is great community stuff. So, um, I just wanted to point that out. Thank you, Melissa. All right. Thanks, everyone. Good night. Have a great evening. Thank you, everyone. Night, Take everyone. care. Thank you. Good night. I'm just going to kind of stay on.